Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining Rose and I for this conversation. My name is Charlotte and I'm the curatorial assistant on Jean Dubuffet Brutal Beauty, which has recently opened at the Barbican Art Gallery. The exhibition is the first large scale show of Dubuffet's work in the UK for more than 50 years and it is on until the 22nd of August, so I hope you'll get a chance to see it. Alongside the exhibition, we've programmed a series of talks with artists whose work we felt resonated in different ways with Dubuffet's own practice and ideas. And I am so, so thrilled to welcome Rose Wiley to our digital stage. Um, so Rose, I'm just gonna do a little introduction to you and your wonderful practice. Drawing from wide ranging cultural references, including film, fashion photography, literature, mythology, history, news and sports, high street images and things around her, Rose paints colorful and exuberant compositions that are uniquely recognizable. Rose's works make use of an inclusive visual lexicon, the directness of ancient and cartoonish figures and a flattened perspective, while simultaneously betraying a deep awareness of art history and painterly conventions. Rose studied at Folkestone and Dover School of Art in Kent and the Royal College of Art in London, graduating in 1981. Her first solo exhibition took place in 1985 at the Trinity Arts Centre in Kent. Rose Wiley, Where I Am, her first solo museum presentation in the United States was on view in 2020 at the Aspen Art Museum in Colorado. And she has recently had solo presentations at the Gallery at Windsor, Vero Beach, Florida in 2020 the Contemporary Art Centre in Malaga in 2018, the Serpentine Sackler Gallery in London, and many others. Rose's work can also be found in prominent collections throughout the United States, Europe, and Asia. She is the recipient of the John Moores Painting Prize presented by the Walker Art Gallery Liverpool and the Royal Academy of Arts Charles Wollaston Award in 2015. And she was elected a senior Royal Acad Academic oh, excuse me, Ac Academician <laughs> In 2014. Um, so we wrote to Rose asking if she'd like to be in conversation about her work because I felt that her painting and drawings, playfulness, humour and prolific output chimed with many elements that I recognised in Dubuffet as well. After the exhibition opened we sent a copy of the catalogue to Rose as an opportunity to reflect on how and where her work intersects with Dubuffet's and Rose gathered together lots of examples of her own work which we will share on screen and talk through together. So tonight's event isn't live, but I'll be sure to be asking Rose lots of questions throughout. So Rose, I'm just gonna share the PowerPoint presentation now, and then we can talk through all of your wonderful images. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, bear with me a second, slideshow. There we go. So would you like to introduce the first one, Rose? Can you see the car? Yes, okay. Um, yes, hello. Um, well, there's certain things about Jean de Buffet that I think probably correspond with me. And one of the things is he, I felt, I don't know, I actually don't know a tremendous lot about him because I came across his work a long time ago mm. and I saw it at the time that I saw it. Um, and I decided not to do a huge investigation because I thought that would, in fact, uh, be boring and stand in the way. So, but anyway, I do think that he probably didn't like art school. That was the first thing. I know, I know that I know that art group. I know that he um, he was against academic drawing. And, exactly. And that's the thing about if you go to an art school, I don't know whether you come out doing academic drawing or whether you don't. But anyway, I wanted to I, because. I feel he may be against art schools. I wanted to say that I, in fact, support them because I think I think you get a lot of extra breadth if you go to an art school. You get stuff chucked at you which you wouldn't otherwise look at, mm. and you are obliged to defend your position. And you also get a lot of contrary and different um, opinions thrown at you. Anyway, the thing about <clears throat> thinking about art schools and the reason I've put this drawing on and the reason why I've put it on first is that I think it's a good example of trying to do something that you actually don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. In seven years of 
art school training. One afternoon, we were obliged to do isometric drawing. Mm -hmm. So I thought, uh, why not have a go at this, see what happens? And I actually don't quite remember what an isometric drawing was, except that the lines don't converge in the mm -hmm. European perspective does, and that the final image didn't look quite like the normal image you get using European perspective. So anyway, I had a go, I started, I simply didn't know how to do it. So mm -hmm. I started at the bottom blue, and then I started drawing, and this is what came up. And I think if I hadn't, I, I think I was rather happy with it. Yeah. And well, the first one I did was completely terrible, but this one I thought was okay because it was new, and I hadn't expected it. The top of the car sitting on the side, not in it. Um, it looks hugely childish, but it, it, in fact, childish isn't the right route to attack it, mm -hmm. not or to accept it, because it's in fact trying to go back to something you were told and taught in inverted, in inverted commas, but um, you couldn't remember much, and it was exciting because I didn't know where it was going. Yes. Yeah. I know the lines are parallel. That was another thing I remembered. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting thinking, because um, I was reading an interview with you from a couple of years ago when um, you were talking about the kind of the use of the word childish when applied to your work. And, you know, it's this idea that you're kind of, you're returning to something that's a kind of unskilled, but actually painting and drawing is a high, is a highly skilled process that you you know you've benefited from going to art school and, do, and practicing over the years so yeah. isn't childish is direct mm. thing, and it is not i don't like imposed drawing structures and it simply doesn't have imposed drawing structures and so yeah. it's looking like it comes and yeah. so um also matisse says use everything at your disposal um, Leger says, do the isolated object. This is an isolated object here. Yeah. Uh, in fact, um, <clears throat> there's a difference between me and uh, Dubuffet because he doesn't do isolated objects. Mm. I do. He he is more um, cover, you know, scatter and cover, cover the cover. Mm -mm. The canvas. I don't usually do that. But I mean, yeah. it's in common. Um, well, I think, can we go to the next picture? Yes, of course. Um, it quite a lot of common because I, I think that there's some sort of headings that I was going to go through. <laughs> and I think he went to unusual sources. You know, correct me, Charlotte, when I'm wrong. Yes. For his inspiration. I don't know whether that's the right word, but he went to um, psychiatric patients and to people who hadn't been taught, people who were in prison, people outside the art school. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yes, he was finding his inspiration in lots of different ways. And and yes, exactly. He was visiting psychiatric hospitals in Switzerland and Germany and yeah. elsewhere in Europe. And he was really captivated by the work that lots of um, patients in these hospitals were doing because it was just this incredible outpouring of creativity. So yes, that's exactly right. Well, yes. Well, in fact, I, for my inspiration, I tend to look and I give homage to um, not not the same people as Dubuffet, but I like um, emerging cultural um, countries where they have been marginalised um, mm -hmm. by the European acceptance of what is a you know good way to draw. So that um, Peru and Colombia and um, yes. Cuba and all of that is the kind of things I like. But also, I think one of the ways that one of the, one of the things I do, and I don't think Dubuffet did do that, was to slot, um, find a slot which has an acceptable way of drawing. And I think these are this group. We can perhaps go quite fast so we can come back. Yes, yeah. This particular group, I picked fashion drawing. Um, yeah. There's no reason why I started with 
fashion drawing. It's just that I came across Nicole Kidman and I just sort of thought, yes, I'll do it. Anyway, go, let's pop back to Nicole Kidman a moment. This is Nicole Kidman here, isn't it? This is Nicole Kidman. Um, and the usual fashion drawing is rather slick and rather, it's always quick. Mm. Well, as far as I can see, it's usually quick. Um, and here she, the thing about her here is that she had this frock on. And yeah. it, was, it was black, in fact, not white. But it looked like as though I'd made it and stuck a band of lumpy material on the bottom, which didn't quite hang properly. So that was what I liked. It, the hang wasn't right. It looked it looked hugely ordinary, but because a Nicole Kidman transformed it, it was not ordinary. And the price was huge. I mean, I don't know whether it's 15,000 or I don't, I don't know what's huge, but it seems a lot for wow. me. Wow. Yeah. Maybe it's not a lot for you or anybody else in the audience, but <laughs> it seems quite a bit. Um, and there it was, a completely ordinary frock. Um, mm. She had transformed and looked like I'd made it. And I thought, well, this is an interesting area. Mm. Can we have the next one? Yes, of course. Which is um, <clears throat> the same thing. This is this is me doing a fashion drawing for um, a national auction in Germany. And I thought, well, you know, fashion drawing is fine. And I very deliberately made her legs not exactly in the manner of the usual models, legs mm -hmm. or shoes or anything, all of that. And so this is a slot. Can we have the next one? A slot that isn't usually used and this again another slot here is this is a, a, quite a big oil painting it's each panel is six foot mm, wow by six so it's 12 foot up and instead of six foot across it's quite big it's enormous and it's and well and it, the thing for me was to make it not look like an oil painting because I, mm. I had six drawings on A4 paper and I thought that I'd, I'd make this um, work from it. And mm -hmm. it's hugely difficult to do. And the, the, the frock she's wearing is a model frock, which I, I had one. I bought a frock with all my, I did some work for you know, some holidays and I spent all my money on this. Frock, and this is it, but it doesn't. It doesn't look like evening dress, and it doesn't look fashionable, and it doesn't look like a an oil painting. So this is mm. again. Can we have the next the same sort of the same sort of idea? Now the next <laughs> slot uh, after <laughs> after the fashion bit is the life drawing because I think life drawings often have a certain look. I don't even often taught as I said. Mm. I don't like drawing structures, and I don't like the fact that stuff all looks. Like same and i don't like um i like new well i like invented and um felt um, mm. so these are two life drawings and the first one has a bigger head and i decided that that would oh, i thought i'd change my mind and i put a smaller head on it anyway they're the same drawing <laughs> So, so do you often do multiple drawings of the same subject, Rose? Often do, yes. Often do one and then I don't like it, so I change it or I start a new one. I often change it on it. So in fact all the earlier attempts are completely lost. You don't I don't have mm. the, the image on the left doesn't exist, but it, the one on the right does. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you have the next one? Again. A slot which came straight out of lockdown um, because my assistants had to stick strips around the canvas because that's what I do before they're stretched. Um, uh, so do you paint directly on the wall but they're stuck to the wall? Cut the canvas, the roll of canvas is on the dining room table, it sits there all the time through dinner, if people come to dinner it's there and I, I cut bits off and staple them on the wall, and then the assistant. If you then you, I paint to the edge, and so um, if you do that and then stretch it, you will lose you will lose the strip all the way around. So I yeah. add the strip. But because of lockdown and because we were all masked and we weren't talking, we weren't in the same room. I had to give them diagrams of hundreds. Mm -hmm. This is another. I would like to make a painting of this. It's a diagram, and I think. 
you know, do you think they would quite, I don't know whether he would, would quite like the idea that you do a painting from a, a difficulty in lockdown, which you turn into. Yeah, yeah. I thought a lot about how he would have found lockdown. I was oh. like, I'm sure he would have, I'm sure he would have reveled in having all this extra time in his studio. <laughs> I see, that does give you a lot of time. Also, yes, exactly. So some of the drawings that you're showing us here are, are new work, aren't they, Rose, that you've been doing during this period? Yes, they're pretty well new. Try the next one. Yeah. You haven't done a painting of that. Yeah, you know, this is, um, <clears throat> I think this has come, I mentioned various um, categories that I'm working with, which I think would work with you. And this one is homage, um, you know, gives it respect to people, artists. Mm. up to this point haven't had a great deal they haven't been rated they haven't been considered they are they are dismissed mm. one of these is jimmy lee sarif yes black american um, artist and i think i think he's knockout good and i think maybe um quite a lot of people who are trained academically may think these drawings are crap i really don't know whether they would or not um, I expect the audience is wondering, uh, you know, is this person taught? Is this person serious? Is this, you know, who is this? <laughs> what is this? I don't know whether you're thinking that at all. Did you think that, Charlotte, when you first saw it? What I, it? I love, I love your work, Rose. I think it's, it's just got full of vitality. I just think it's so exciting. Go for it, and I think something, um, I think something that we've both spoken about is is about you know these artists who, like you say, have been marginalised and because they aren't kind of adhering to this sort of European academic way of working. Well, I know and, it's fairly risky to do this sort of drawing. This is the Statue of Liberty. Yes, uh, this is an untaught Black American artist. I think yes, I'm sure he was untaught, which is yeah. Really one of the reasons that I find him so exhilarating and mm. so exciting because he's just, he doesn't repeat a lot of old sort of crap that's gone before. So um, anyway, uh, they're both, uh, I used, I do it twice and I've done it on a diary. I think you asked if I worked in a diary. I do often work late mm. at night and that accounts for the lined uh, paper at the back, which I like. Yeah. Um, and Charlotte, you told me he worked with um, paving stones. Oh, know? Dubuffet, yes, he was yeah. fascinated with pavements yes. and with sections of the floor. Yes, exactly. Yes, well, I'm, I think I like lines. I like horizontal lines. I like, I think parallel lines are interesting and can give a formality. Anyway, um, so they are both me drawing him, drawing Jimmy Lee Sabbath. Yeah, I was reading a bit more about Jimmy Lee said of this morning about um, the way in which he was working with lots of salvaged materials. So, you know, working with kind of um, doors from demolished buildings mm. and then using house paint and making his own pigments. And well, yeah, that's, so yeah. fascinating. Yeah, well, that's, well, that's good. I mean, now we're all terribly used to it. And certainly Basquiat did it, who was a follower. And I'm, a, you know, I'm a fan of Basquiat. Mm. But actually, talking about Basquiat, I think his incidental drawings uh, are more marvellous than his mm. presentation ones. And these are more like Basquiat's incidental drawings, which is I yeah. think, a great draw. I think Basquiat's uh, his drawings are very nice. But anyway, try the, try the next one, because yep. um, I'll run out of time. And Anyway, these are, these are G still Jimmy Lee Sarif, and he made mm. women with big hair. Mm -hmm. uh, I have done before women with big hair, um, mm -hmm. so uh, I I was intrigued by the by the title, even without the drawing. And the drawing. But again, I think people may not think take this very seriously. Try the next one. Are there more? Of yeah. these? Yes, this is the same uh, mm -hmm. same, same subject. Some yeah, Statue of Liberty. Right. Try the next one. And this is him again. Now the thing about this. Uh, this is nearer. I'm more. This is more faithful. This is a story mm. I think I wrote it on. Mm. Uh, and the top left-hand corner is a wonderful chair, mm. which is the way I draw chairs. And I was interested because that's how he did chairs. And so I fell for the chair. Can we do the next one? Yes. Um, <laughs> tell me about my pace. Am I okay? Do you do you want? Me yeah. To no, you're doing a great job. Fine. Okay. This, this one is 
um, <clears throat> I think it's the Queen's birthday. And she, because of lockdown, she was outside somewhere <laughs> in the castle. So the sky is blue. <clears throat> I think I, what he likes is sort of shorthand. Outside, right, the sky is blue, the grass is green. <laughs> Not in a room here. He, she was in a white tent, white tent. Um, and she was by herself, completely isolated, on a chair, not not Jimmy Lee Sellers' chair, mm. not the chair here. But I but it's, yeah, and it's I, interesting seeing the same the same chair kind of or the same type of chair. Yes, I appearing. Brought it in and I put her on it. She's very small. Queen yes, Sellers. and so and she's isolated, and so I isolated her in that chair, and she had the army on one side. I think the bloke because that's the army, and the navy on the other side. Yeah, and so I put them in. Um, uh, but it, I thought it was interesting. I used lockdown, I used isolation. It's off the BBC, so it's accessible. We can all see it. We're not at, at, the, at Windsor Castle. We are in our own rooms watching, or in the mm. drawing, watching the telly. So anyway, this is. Um, do you um, do you draw a lot from things that you see on the telly? Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. Yes, I'm straight from moving because it's quite good. They're moving, but flick on. Well, it's the same chair. Yeah. I quite liked it. I don't know whether he was here. Did, this, did he keep things going? Did he? I think well, he did. Interesting it's thing. interesting because um, talking about the chair, because he did do lots of things. For example, he did lots of tables. And he was really fascinated with walls. He was fascinated with the ground, um, with oh, doors. Was so it is a kind of a similar sort of typology. This ground is good. Walls. Marvelous. I think walls. I love the way walls meet the floor in houses. Yes. Like my house, which is kind of quite old, uh, the floor meets the wall. The wall meets the floor in a very good way. But anyway, mm. I've used the same chair here and I've put uh, Miranda on it because I was working on Miranda because I've been asked to do some, um, to work with Shakespeare. Oh, on, yes. On one of his plays and I picked The Tempest. The Tempest. So, yeah, now I've done Miranda and I popped her in a few couple of times at the top. Yeah. So I've made her three years old. She's actually not three in the play, but she's three when she gets to the island. And oh, I see, she, okay. She's 15. She's 15 in, in the play starts. But here, again, on the other side, this side of the screen, the right. Right? Is it right? Are we looking at it? Is this the right? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because this chair is sort of travelling amongst a number of your different works and, you know, being used with different characters. And giving it respect. Yes. Which, which is, again, it's, he's not a prison person or a um, psychi psychiatric um, patient. Awesome. This is another one. It's, that's not particularly... I think that's less difficult, that one, because she's kind of pretty and more conventionally acceptable. Try and what, is this... Yeah. Or, Oh yeah, what oh, I love the champagne bottle lady. Well, yes, you like. Anyway, this is again the same homage, same idea of homage. Uh, this time it's Morris Hirschfeld, mm. who's been resurrected in uh, the United States, and he he kind of does folk painting. And yes, he, I said to Charles earlier, I think his girls are better than his animals. His yes. Animals his animals are more popular. If you go to the Met or anywhere, <coughs> Mama, you will find postcards, more postcards of the animals. Yes. I think, I'm, I am assuming, you may not, I could be completely wrong, but I'm assuming because people like them uh, than the girls. Anyway, this is a girl and I found her. <coughs> I was um, again. I was reading a bit more about Morris Hirschfield because I hadn't I hadn't heard of him when we had our talk previously, and um, I, I agree that I um, I definitely I really like the girls. And there was a beautiful painting of a girl lying on a patterned couch, which I thought was great. But um, I didn't realise that he had a show at MoMA in 1943. Okay. He had um, he had a lot of negative criticism. For it, I think because again, this kind of coming back to this idea of things being childlike, um, mm -hmm. and one critic described him as master of two left feet, which I thought was quite funny. <laughs> yes, but if you work like this, you will get a mass of criticism. Yeah, just do you're called untaught, childish, naive, phony. There's a string of yeah, 
rude words when in fact you are intoxicated with someone mm. who is drawing for the first time. We are also told to draw as yeah. if we are seeing something for the first time, but when you do it, nobody likes it. Anyway, try, I think I've got another Morris Hirschfield. Maybe I didn't. Oh, no. Well, this is, again, a great, maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but I think I said to Charlotte earlier, I just love his shorts. I love the yellow shorts. Yeah, they're great. And they just, it, it, it's very direct, it's very straightforward. Um, and I just love, I loved it. And so I saw it on the computer, on the web, and I I find myself, without knowing, I've picked up a pencil and I'm, I'm working with it. I want to make a note of it. And I also call it history of art, so I'm giving it respect to minority cultural images. Mm. But not, not so much anymore because they're coming up. Yeah. People in general find them difficult. So yeah. when were you, because at the top you've written history of art notes, and we, we talked a bit about this idea of, you know, the history of art as being something that is very kind of rigid, but obviously it's shifting more and more. And so are you kind of creating your own history of art, do you feel, with some of your drawings? Well, I suppose. I, I'm yeah. including, what I'm doing is including yes. somebody from Tonga. I, I want to include it. It's not, it's not an academic uh, move on my part. Mm -mm. Drawing. So that's why I, why I put it yeah. Yeah, art should include them, and certainly when I was a student, this would not have been this certainly this would have been rejected and called silly. Mm. Let's have the next one. Yep. Again, same thing. Um, this is that we've had Tonga, we've had Morris Hirschfield, we've had I don't know who else we've had, but this is um, African. Barbershop signs, who uh, I find that a huge source of. Um, so I don't terribly like the ins word inspiration, but it keeps coming up because I think that's mm. what it is. I like it because it's. I have empathy with it. It mm. suits, fits me. It's what I do anyway. So when I see it, I like it. Um, mm. I don't know whether we all like what we do or whether we like something else, but in this case, I do do it. And the left hand pencil one is more of a study. Mm. And I so, just, it's closer. And then I did a painting for it. So you often do drawings first, Rose, and then do paintings from the drawings. That's right, isn't it? Uh, yes, I draw a lot all the time. Whenever I see something which is I like the look of, you know, there's a ton of it around, right? like a wall or floor, uh, you know, a leaf, and then mm. anything. Actually, there are yeah. like thunderbugs around. Too. Anyway, I like this. Uh, the, if you look on the web at the African barbershop signs, they are very mixed. And I picked one that I, some of them are wonderful and some of them aren't so good, but I like this one. Mm. I called him Soldier Boy and then I made a, I made several paintings and then I thought it looked a bit like John Cusack. So I, <laughs> I, I can see that now you say it, yeah. <laughs> it was John Cusack in a particular film, Pain and Glory or something. It was a oh, I see. Beach Boys and he, he had a bun in his mouth, and he, um, <laughs> the, the, the photographer settled on his mouth for minutes as he was negotiating this large lump of, of um, barbecue bun in his mouth. And so, I, this is this is my anyway. Uh, it sort of looks like. So, yeah, no, I can definitely see John Cusack now. <laughs> the mouth, the mouth is you've got a big bun in your mouth, <laughs> and the next. Yeah. And again, I, I'm slotting through homage, and this one is um, a figurehead, a wooden figurehead. And I just, again, I like folk, and I love American folk painting. I look at it often, mm -hmm. one of them. And um, I don't know whether your man, um, Jibufi, liked folk. He may not. He's often quite carefully drawn, and he didn't. He was quicker, wasn't he? He was more immediate, I think. Well, yeah, I think um, it's interesting because I think when we were thinking about Art Brute, you know, his definition of Art Brute is um, art made by anyone kind of outside the cultural mainstream. So that so kind of obviously... Um, sorry, Rose. This fits, doesn't it? And so figureheads fit. Yes. Completely 
where he, yes, let's go on. Anyway, this one I've put in because I want it to, which I think is often a good idea. You know, you're doing a, you're doing a talk on the buffet. And, um, you put in something because you want to put it in. But however, I have got a painting of it that I've slotted in right at the end. So um, this is my staircase. So it's objective drawing in a way. It's mm -hmm. straight in front of the staircase looking up. So there's no zigzaggy line for the steps because you're looking straight at it. The staircase, oh, yeah. the staircase twiddled. So it's no good saying, oh, well, you know, you haven't put the step, the conventional step line in it. it was actually, when you looked, it wasn't there. Um, and the steps went round at the top, and there's a rail and a brick wall. And I do have a, a man's jacket. I do like wearing men's clothes. I think mm -hmm. whatever her name is, the photographer, I can't remember her name, Vivian, somebody or another, she thought men's clothes were better cut. Ah, and Vivian Mayer? That's her name. Yes. And she thought. Um, men's clothes were better cut if you wore men. Anyway, this jacket is a man's clothes. Uh, it's a man's. It's very big, and it covered my skirt. So in a sense, it's me. But you know, which is I like. I like square. I don't like particularly long and thin, and I don't like elegant. I like compact, mm. sculptural. Um, anyway, go to the next one. That was just a fill-in, and this is also a fill-in for contrast, mm -hmm. because I think Dubuffet, uh, he he. Um, he covered his surface, and I, I tend not to in the manner of, I said, leisure, who says, you know, an isolated object is mm. exciting and dramatic. Because um, this, I thought, was quite different to other things that you've shown, because it's the, the background doesn't have any writing in it, and... <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. It's black ink, it's very... Uh, and it was a mill wrench, it's... it's um, oh, it's yeah, a, of course. It's a tool, but it looks like I think um, a smallish man supporting a woman in the air they look like a couple, mm. of, couple of dancers yeah of, like they're dancing yes I like that anyway mm. racing and dancing yes and I think this actually belongs to another slot which is mm. I love a catalogue sure yes Charlotte sent me a catalogue. I was in lockdown, still am, and didn't go to the, haven't gone to the Djibouti, haven't gone to the Balkans. But I love the catalogue, and I think catalogues are hugely valuable. And they delve into um, background stuff, which you don't necessarily see if you just go and look at the exhibition. You might, but you don't necessarily. Mm. Um, and these sort of background drawings to a painting yes. get into catalogues, but they don't get into exhibitions. And this is um, a drawing for a, a large painting, fairly big. Um, it's um, 12 foot by 6 foot. Yeah. Four panels. They're usually 6 foot, roughly, because I can handle them. Mm. And these were drawings I made. Again, they're not, I don't think they're academic, they're very straightforward, and I remember these aeroplanes from seeing them in Bayswater in 1940. So, um, you know, it's kind of memory mm -hmm. that I've done here. Anyway, so this it, is it, the it painting into, here, isn't it? That's right. It went into yes. a painting 12 foot by 6 foot, and this is yeah. the painting. Yes, Oops, it, sorry. And again, this is. I love a catalogue, um, catalogue. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's quite, it's very nice if sometimes if you see paintings before they're finished. Yeah. And you do, that's what happens. I know Matisse does that, you know, you can see unfinished paintings, but I think you have to be a big boy <laughs> to have that included. Otherwise I think they're just ditched and no one sees them ever because they're covered up. And they're not, nobody's particularly interested in the, uh, photographs that the artist has taken until, as I said, uh, you know, you, you become more visible. Anyway, this yeah. is this is this is um, an earlier version of a painting, and I often wish that I left it. But anyway, I went on and finished it, and I like the end. I like, Can I know what the numbers mean, Rose. I like the finish on as well, but I do like this. Um, 
anatomy. It's a, anatomy of a horse, but again, from memory from art school. Yeah. Um, we had to do anatomy. So again, I was, um, I I was wondering what the numbers meant, where it says 13, 14, 27, 23. Uh, yes, that's right. <clears throat> I was, we had to do um, anatomy as an art student. I don't, I'm not sure, I don't think art students do it anymore. Do they? I don't know. Um, an sure anatomical do. drawing? I'm not sure. I don't think they may not. Mm. Yeah. Um, was it something that you found valuable as an art student? Uh, yes, I no, we were set, we had set um, time on the timetable to yeah. anatomy and skeletons, and we were uh, encouraged to look at an artist who used anatomy. I remember looking at Leonardo at an yeah. and copying his bones and stuff, and you can see you can see the effect. Anyway, next one. Yeah. Oh, actually, stop a moment. You see, can you go back? Oh, yes, of course. Can it, um, the hair on his neck, the mane, mm -hmm. that's what it's called, isn't it? I've put in perspective, I always, I, it makes me kind of giggle as I'm painting it, that I'm actually painting the hair blowing backwards. Oh, yes, of course. I do it with eyelashes as well, it's all, <laughs> it's all, it's all a useful thing. All in motion. If you're looking up, I put the eyelashes sometimes going over the eye. Ah, uh, of course, yeah. Coming down because if you've got long eyelashes and you're looking up and you're looking from the bottom underneath, then the eyelashes would appear to be over the would be yeah, poking out. Yes, over the eye when you yeah. so so all this is, again looks very untaught. Um <laughs> I mean I think the main is kind of quite clever. I think Yeah. Would, I don't actually like clever, but I think no, was, I didn't. I didn't realise that it was in motion, but now, now I can completely see I it. I don't like clever and Lucian art. Mm. For instance, the clever is the enemy of art, so it's quite. I think they are slightly clever, but you wouldn't even notice. Mm. Notice they were clever because the yeah, thing, because the whole thing doesn't look. Also, I think it looks like a wall painting. Yes, it does look like a wall painting. There's a door opening. It looks like a big wall painting, which I like. Like yeah. Do the next. Try the next one. Yes. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think this is again the same thing that I love a catalog that you don't, you wouldn't see this mm. um, in the exhibition, probably. But because these are more sort of um, preparatory drawings, aren't they, Rose? Yes, you put them. Collage. Yeah. I think you said that that Dubuffet used quite a lot of collage. Yes, he did use lots of collage, exactly. Definitely a connecting point. You can see that there are these connections, although the final look of the work isn't similar, but there are mm. connections of attitude, massive connections. Of attitude. Yes, en enormously. Yes, yes, I think so. Anyway, um, yeah, I did paint the girl on the right. I painted her uh, okay. big, the, the, yes, the right-hand figure. So. Yeah. I liked her and I put her on a small piece of canvas and then I can we go back to the other one? Yes. I, she she's um, sort of roughly six foot across. Wow. Tacked her up on I stapled her up on the wall and then um I decided to there's a bit of a painting coming through at the top which you can just see but not much of but you can see that there is something at the top. I just yes. I just stapled it on, and then I used that constraint from lockdown of lack of space, lack of uh, assistance, tacking mm. things, stapling things up on top of stacking on top of each other. And yeah. I, made, I made a painting <clears throat> of it, which will be probably perhaps shown in uh, *Turn the Contemporary Margaret*, and I don't know it might I, whether it could be rejected, but I put it in anyway. Yeah, and I've used. That same figure came up big on a piece of canvas, and then I stuck it on another canvas, and so it's got abrupt edges, which is quite interesting, and came out of lockdown. So, um, are you are you using collage then sometimes in your paintings because you're putting yes. things on top of each other? Yes, that's right. I'm stacking yeah. for lack of space. Yes, uh, and then I stacked. I did the same thing on. On the painting as a deliberate uh, move from one thing leading up into another. 
So, mm. yes. so I told her I liked the girl, so I did her a girl. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's nice. You made her bigger. Did, has she come bigger for you? Yes, she's come bigger. She said, oh, that's good. Can we have them big? I like them big. <laughs> the blob of yellow. <laughs> oh, go back a tick. Oh, yeah, this one. The blob of yellow on, at one point was on, had fallen off her hair onto her face. Oh. Like an earring, so I scraped it off and put it bit lower down. With. And it slid down. No, it was no longer active. Anyway, I didn't want an earring on her. She, anyway, <laughs> there was something she could be wearing an earring, but I didn't want it. Okay. Um, Dubuffet made some paintings that were so thick with the, the paint on the surface that they used to melt off the canvas when they were hung sometimes. Really? Yeah. Oh, thick blobs that stick out. But they've never, as far as I know, they've never melted. <laughs> what sort of paint did he use? Um, he, he, well, it was a bit of a mixture. But he kind of he worked with oil, but then he also used some enamel paint. He also worked with house paint. It, I think the earlier ones would have been an oil paint. Yeah. So he, yeah. Did, he didn't despise oil paint because oil paint's very traditional. Yeah, use. well, I think he probably well, he tended to sort of mix things into it. So mm. lots of kind of mixing in sand and shards of glass and gravel, so giving it a kind of a, a texture. So yeah. he was kind of, I think he was always taking a medium and then making it his own. Yeah, I've tried a bit of mud. Yeah. Jimmy Lee sort of uses mud. And I've oh, with mud, of, yeah, of course. I've tried a bit of mud. And I've tried, um, I was given a packet of healing crystals. Oh, okay. Quite nice, and I poured that into one, right? But I forgot to tell anyone, so nobody actually knows. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so one of your paintings has got healing qualities. I'm from the Serpentine, I'm not sure what she was. Ah. She's, I can't remember her name, but fairly recently, and she yeah. had back packets of in a very beautiful box. Very, very oh, wow. And she, uh, her hands all it gave me a box, and I poured it into the paint. Anyway, the next one, this one hasn't got it, I don't think. Um. <laughs> I just want to mention that the um, New York Times did a picture, did some snaps of my, I had a show in New York and they did a, some snaps of my house and my studio. And I was so disappointed in them because they looked like they weren't mine at all. They looked like mm. somebody else's house and somebody else's studio. Mm. There was a funny colour and they were, something had happened to them. I don't know what it was. Anyway, so yeah. I, I took a photograph of my studio and this is, what came up and I liked it because I thought it looked like a I think I told Charlotte earlier a dingy underground <laughs> an underground scene the railway lines would be underneath the far picture and this would be a poster on the wall <laughs> it's so dingy and so uh, and then you, there's, there's another one here isn't there yes grainy this is yes this is another slot category of I love a uh, I love a catalog because mm. the pictures of this painting. This is a painting. It's, it's fairly new. They're all quite new, but it's in New York, and <clears throat> um, it's flat on the wall, and you don't get the same uh, feel of it flat mm. as you do when it's on the floor and you're looking up it. And so I like this picture because it is on the floor, and I am looking up it and along it. And yeah. Uh, apart, it would never come up again without this photograph, so I like that. Okay. It's, it, I, I am also looking at it now, Rose, where we're talking about the way that the wall and the floor meet. <laughs> you said that that's something that you look at in your own house. It's something I'm, it's something I'm looking at now. This one isn't spectacular. This is upstairs. Downstairs is better. <laughs> You're right. Downstairs <laughs> is better. But it has a lot of very good uh, items. Windows are quite good, and there's a lot of a lot of old plaster and you can chip it about it's, you know, it's yeah because your your studio is upstairs in your house is that right yes it's upstairs yes yes and the walls are plaster and they've all it's it's not precious yeah I don't know about du Buffet, but i think he may not have been pre precious was he i don't i don't think so he's in his studio looks a bit like he almost looks like an alchemist <laughs> oh, he's well, surrounded by all different types of materials and yeah very experimental yes, so I, like, I think i like alchemy in paintings i remember yeah um, matthew barney he did a bit of alchemy and i like yes i like 
I like the change from one thing to another. Transformation. Yeah, yeah, the transformation exactly. There is quite a good wall at the back, but it's not. It's not. It's, it doesn't hit. It's not hitting the floor well here. Yeah, it's a bit. It's not. Yeah. What I was referring to. Try another. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think again, this is something to do with the fact that I think the the paintings that the artist likes most are often the paintings that the public like least. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether Dubuffet found that, but I think this can happen. And I have, I like this painting, I think it's metaphysical. Mm. And it's, um, it's a Korean football player, Son, mm -hmm. um, wearing Tottenham colours. And when the public, I had a show and so, when the public sent in their intergrams, they never used this one, they used all the others. Ah, oh, because this is from your most recent exhibition there? Yes, this one was left out. Um, oh, how interesting. I don't know why, I think it happens. I think it happens. I went to a Picasso show at Tate Modern uh, two years ago. I don't know, a day, four days, a day, a year in Picasso's life. Oh, and yes, yeah. It was great. And there was a wonderful uh, painting that I'd never seen before. And I tried to get an image as a postcard, but didn't have it. But that's happened. Mm -hmm. Anyway, try the next one. Yep. Again, this is uh, football in action. Uh, I'm not sure. So it's my same comment that I think people tend to, because they're not academic, they tend to dismiss them. Yeah. Okay, try the next one. Um, I did a big painting of fluffy hair. This is me having just washed my hair and not... <laughs> I often put Vaseline, I do a mixture of, it's actually quite a smart mixture, it's Vaseline and Dior Hypnotique, I squirt a bit in and I put it on and it becomes like it is now. But when wow. I, if I just washed it and don't do that, it, it, it goes very fluffy. It goes very fluffy. It's not sophisticated, it goes <laughs> short and fluffs up. Anyway, I did a, I did a drawing, this one. Was the first mm -hmm. one. I did a more regulation drawing, not quite so plain. Yeah. And uh, then I did a painting from it. And the painting, this one again has been left out. But I yeah. think it's funny. I think it it's, is. I like including it, but I have, it's never been included, so I'm including it now. Yeah, no, it's great. It's so wonderful to see all of these things, Rose. Do you, do you often do self portraits or reference yourself? No, so yes, yeah, so sometimes I can't think of what else to draw. I think, you know, try to do a hand, my hand, or I do my foot to my. I've done yeah. Yes, I, some, time to time, yes, yeah, quite often. Yeah. Anyway, I don't think it's particularly. <laughs> I'm not sure it's particularly, I don't think it's particularly enchanting as a person, but as a drawing. Uh, but I think also interesting, like we're saying about, you know, talking about the exhibition catalogue and things that things that are included that we might not otherwise see. Like that's why this is so brilliant for you to have included so many drawings and things and more preparatory things that otherwise we might not have had the chance to view before. Well, that's why I love a catalogue and that's why I was so delighted when I got one through the <laughs> I, I wouldn't otherwise um, have revisited Dubuffet and I do have liked him and I liked him a lot. Oh um, good. And so <clears throat> I was very pleased and yes so this could get into a catalogue at some point. You know, yeah. yeah and it's it's so um it's so interesting as well that you know you having this this time to go through the catalogue and it's kind of come brought up all these interesting pairings between you and him that maybe we might not have otherwise thought about. No, I wouldn't have thought, wouldn't have. I wouldn't even have been thinking of Dubuffet. It's very good that he he has he's come up. Oh, good. Oh, I'm I, so pleased. Let's have a look. In terms of objectivity, oh, yes. I, I did have a blue jumper on, which is what I was wearing. Yes, I had a blue jumper with a high neck, uh, glasses, and I had lipstick on. Yes, so go back. So it's a, it's an objective drawing. Yeah, doesn't straight from the glass. Uh, this is the same thing. This is a history, not art history. This is a history mm. image because the uh, King John. <clears throat> I don't know what year he is, but the, at the time he was considered not a particularly good king, and mm. the decided to uh, get rid of him and kill him. Nice. Yeah. 
So they got a frog and they took the poison out and they put it in the wine. You probably know it's... Anyway, oh, I don't think I did know this, no. This is history, but it doesn't look like a history drawing. Well, yeah. And it's, it's something I like to uh, use, that it is history, but mm. it looks like it. You know, it. This is serious painting, this is serious drawing, it yeah. is, but it doesn't look like it. Yep. Right, have a go at the next one. <clears throat> Uh, this is the first slot I mentioned, which is uh, find an area which has a prescribed way of uh, representing. And I think presentation drawings from architects usually are quite quick and have a sort of flash about them. Mm. They may not, I mean, they may kill me for saying this, but they, from my point of view, as an artist, I think they often have flash. Uh, mm. They are made to look attractive. I think they are made to sell the picture, whereas I think artists don't do things to make them look attractive or to sell. I mean, mm. some, some may, but I mean, a lot don't. And this, yeah. is, this is an architectural drawing. Uh, I liked the building, and it was an old theatre in the Mississippi. Um, yeah. It had burnt down, and it was in, on somebody's Instagram, and I liked I liked. Drawing I did this late at night and so mm -hmm. I it because I don't think it looks like an architectural drawing. Yeah. Uh, but it is, and I do quite a lot of them. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to say I've not seen so many buildings in what you've selected, but it's something you do do a lot of. No, I do. Yes, I've picked the drawings. I think I don't know. I, they've been respect and, and homage a lot of them, but yes, I do do buildings. And I do. Yeah. Modern, I do modern, old, you know. Don't mind. I, I I love modern buildings quite so very much like ancient buildings. Yeah. Anyway, so and um, I think this might be. This is the image that you sent me through yesterday. This is the end of my bit. I mine is vastly bigger than the geography's, and I think that any artist would presumably snatch the opportunity. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> Flood. Flood the audience with themselves and then deal for a second with Kibufi, which is exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. Anyway, so this I did show you a drawing of um, a woman coming down the stair, um, mm. the painting, and I've included it because, um, well, one, because I've just done it, so I'm always quite intrigued and excited by what I've just done. Um, the, the second thing is that the a, a, a man I know said to me, um, mm, said, you know, the painting you've just done is an indication of, you know, your quality as an artist. So I thought, mm. well, you know, here you are. Um, put yourself online. This is a painting I've just done. At the right hand bit is going into the Haywood, uh, a boot show this summer, but the left hand one I've added, and I like them together. That's a yeah. Nice, I don't know whether you will feel. Uh, did a painting that added it, put another one with it, and then. <clears throat> um, well, he quite often used um, collage in that way because he would, you know, make a painting and then sometimes use the painting as a form in his collage. Yeah. So quite often he was always pairing different things together. He was flexible. Mm. Yes, would you say he was flexible? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like a relentless experimenter, I'd say. Yes, why well, like experimenting with. Uh, what I put with what? Yes. Because it's not it's not planned. I don't plan them, but I like them together, and they often end up together. It's funny. I've just been. I'm just about to click my mouse to change this. Here, I was clicking my mouse to change. The oh. Got <laughs> now on your screen. Yes. Do you want me to go to the next one? Yes. Do the next one. Ooh. So these were um, are some of the images that you you took from the catalogue, aren't you, Rose, from the Dubuffet catalogue? Uh, this is the product of I Love a, I Love a Kettle. Mm. Again, this one, the first one I picked, I just thought the girl's legs were so good. Actually, the one before, I think, the girl's legs. Um, I think that's, I think, Charlotte, you said it fall, follows on quite nicely. Yes, it? yeah, exactly. So we're going from these legs okay. to these legs. Oh, that's right. They're quite, <laughs> I, I like particularity. I'm not sure whether Dubuffet like particularity. I don't know. I think he may not. He may not. That may be a I think, yeah, I think he was, he sort of was always 
chopping and changing and moving on to the next thing, but he definitely did stick with certain things for a while. Yes, yeah, so right. I think um, something which is seen and then recorded and, and sort of stuck in the work, which uh, then often is, you know, the viewer thinks nothing is particular at all, but in fact it is. And I think these legs and the shoes, and I once had some shoes rather like that, I think they're terribly... Um, Terribly good. I just fell for this. Snap. Yeah, it's beautiful. This photograph. It's by Brassai, and the um, one of the figures is Dubuffet's wife, Lily. Yes, thank you, Charlotte, for sending it. Oh, I love it. I like a frock as well. I like the diagonal line. Yeah, and when, when we were talking about the little dogs in the corner as well, weren't we? Yes, yes. But I like a face. I do not like. It's a great photograph. I think it okay. is. Yeah. I'll try the next one. Uh, this is the man himself. So. I looked at this and I thought that the square background was interesting and Charlotte told me that that was collaged on, so I, I didn't know that because I didn't read, I hadn't read it, I just looked at it. Um, I have said that I think people say, um, I think he exaggerates sometimes, from my point of view, exaggerate, huge exaggeration it becomes distortion and can become, can become irritating. It, it needn't, it can be wonderful. Mm. On the other hand, Absolutely, on the other hand, if you do realism, that can become deadly boring. So what we do is kind of float around between them. Float um, around between them. Yeah, that's a perfect description. I think the top, I think the top right, as I'm looking at it, which is, I'm not sure, I think it's in reverse, is it? Is it it's the big head anyway. Yeah. Is, is it top right? Charlotte? Top right, with the one with no hair? Uh, it's top right with sort of... Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. It actually looks like him, doesn't it, in this photograph? Yes, but it's, I think it was a very good head. Mm, it is. Sometimes I'm critical about his heads and think he, he's, you know, he's, uh, they've, they've become for me too graphic or they've become this or that or that. But I thought that was a very, thank you for the catalogue. I, yeah. I thought it was a very good head. It was uh, somehow different. Try the, try the next. Yeah. We can come back. Um, and this one, as I've for a long time um, looking at uh, the R loop arm mm. sculpture was my favourite. More, mm. more than <clears throat> do more um, compulsive paintings, obsessive paintings. I like the R loop. I know they are pretty much the same, but um, I like the R loop sculpture very much. The big, yeah. um, exhilarating. Um, Sculpture which he did, which is probably my favourite work of Dubuffet. Um, um, I was going to ask Rose if you've ever worked in sculpture. A bit. Yeah. Off, off and on. Oops. I've worked in sculpture, but not seriously. But um, I am extending my practice, and work of mine is being made into three dimensional images. Wow. So. Yes. For a forthcoming exhibition? So I think that there was a big pineapple in New York, which uh, I did the watercolour. I did the drawing first, I did the watercolour, and then the watercolour has been um, turned into a, uh, a, I don't know, nine foot um, bronze. Wow. Um, isolated. Pineapple. That sounds incredible. So it, it is my image, which is translatable because it was translatable mm. and that's again an interesting resonance with the with the or loop as well because like you say it translated into sculpture um yeah. it was also a performance and then you know kind of almost the built environment and architectural structures as well well i think of the bar house did that too i mean there's a lot of that going on and i think that it has to be something which is translatable because otherwise mm. uh, you know it's kind of it's false and so yeah Certainly, I'm very interested in the flat image being blown up. Yeah. Easy foot. You know. Yeah. And then stuck you always work on, on quite a large scale, don't you, with your paintings? And then stuck on a building. I thought my grumpy girl, which I did, could be made flat and stuck on a Zaha Hadid. Hers ah. would be horizontal and the grumpy girl would be vertical. And yeah. And would be at least... You know, it would be a hundred foot on hers. I thought it was a great idea. So yes, sculpture is something that I 
normally I work two to Yeah. Um, I have lots of fancy ideas about big sculpture. So that's yeah. So, but anyway, I do like his R loop sculptures. And when, when, as an art student, um, it was Germany and America that flooded. The, no, after sorry, not as an art student. Later, early sixties, seventies, eighties. You know, it was Germany and, and the United States. No longer France. And Dubuffet, I thought. Uh, carried a banner for France, he sort of brought it back. Mm. Point of view. He was the artist that I thought of, you know, French, yes. yes. Yeah, was one of the, the first people, people that we, you would have thought of. The other man who did blue, what's his name? Eve, um, you know. Eve, Eve Klein? Eve <laughs> Klein, that's right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, him. Um, they, were, they were big, but I mean, Norman, the big kind of art shift went to America, didn't it? Um, yeah. Um, School of Paris and France is no longer so vibrant. Mm. I think um, Dubuffet uh, kept it going. Yeah. Try the next one. This is a more compulsive one, but I like the fact that he had treated the middle as a, a white square in the middle. Yeah. And the lines are much finer. In the, so he's done a complete change. He's done a um, change of colour and change of line thickness. Mm. That was. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, and this is also a big collage. Mm. So he was kind of p piecing together lots of different types of work that he was making, bits of paintings, bits of figures. There's kind of some architectural structures. Which is what Basquiat did. Well, mm. I've done it too. I've stuck paper on and then I've painted the stuff on paper and drawn. Yes, it's a connection. So. Yeah, and actually it's interesting you mentioned Basquiat because um, Dubuffet was a big influence on Basquiat and it was these paintings which were from a series called The Theatres of Memory that were Basquiat's favourites. No, I could, well I could see that. Um, but from my point of view, I was particularly his incidental drawings, I, I thought Basquiat more hit the jackpot, you know, hit the high point, but then that's uh, that's not what you hear. You didn't want to hear that on a Dubuffet lecture, but I, you know. <laughs> no, but they were they were very intertwined. So definitely, it's all relevant. I did read that because I read an interview by uh, his dealer, and um, it was very interesting. I could. Oh yes, I with know. Arnie Glimcher. It was because of your show that I looked and read this interview, and I didn't. I hadn't really thought that Basquiat. Uh, I didn't know he came. He went to the gallery and studied. Um, but that's, yeah, that's, that was very interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll try the next one. Are we really yeah. haven't run out of time. Probably... I think we, yeah, I think we can probably do the last couple, and then we might be at the hour. Oh, that's. Well, see, this is in your catalogue, and I would never have thought that this was uh, Mr. De mm. But looking at it, of course, it is. It's got the absolutely his style of uh, our loop handling, hasn't it? Yeah, it's so. Uh, clear and it's so uh, uh, dramatic and I just loved it so I put this one in because not because it's characteristic but because I love it and it, yes which is uh, Dubuffet and I like it very much anyway next one yeah this one I like very much too I like his branch um, mm. and uh, I just you know I can take to it it's, I can like the sculpture a lot so can I have the next one yeah, because this um, because you picked a few of his sculptures, that's what made me ask if you'd worked in kind of three dimensions like this. Well, I've picked more sculptures here than I have two dimensional. Yes, well, so that's that's because I prefer his sculptures. Yeah, it's in isolation, so they fit more. And yeah, and they and it's also thinking because they're all made from sort of found materials. So we were talking, this is made from sponge. Yes, I didn't know it was a sponge, but you told me, and yes, I can see that. Yeah, I thought. I mean, for me, that the surface is a bit craggy, but the surface yeah. sponge, then, well, of course. I mean, <laughs> and then there's another, I think, yeah, this one. This one yes, and this one I like very much. I like, this is one of my favourite of the sculpture that's not um, Arlu, but it's, it's um, and I liked it. I thought it, I think I, we talked about this, and I said it reminded me slightly of my favourite Baslitz sculpture, yes. which is very. Uh, roughly carved wood and perhaps paint there's a bit of paint on it but I think his Bartlett's sculpture is horizontal this one is not um, but 
there is uh, there is a similar there's an empathy and I I don't know the dates but I presume that you were fake came before. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, these ones would have been made in the about the fifties, I think. Yeah, it will be before. Yeah. I mean, if you say you love Mozart quartets and you love Beethoven quartets, and you maybe don't like Haydn's quartets so much, mm. remember that Haydn did them first. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. Important. You know, who yeah. Did first and who kind of went along with it and fluffed it up a bit, you know, which is what Mozart. And uh, both of them did. I mean, hugely successfully, I mean, marvellous, but and I think that Yubufe uh, was one of the early ones. Mm. And also, it's this interesting kind of, you know, transformation of different materials as well, because I think this one was made from lava stone. Oh, it was? Which stone? I think it was made from lava stone. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. Oh, no, quite. Well, can um, Yes, big, exactly. How big is it? Um, this one, it's in the exhibition. This one's probably 40 centimetres tall. Oh, I see. It's not huge. It's not no, big. they're all quite, they're all quite little. I see, because I could, well, the thing about a reproduction is, unless you read the dimensions, which of course a sensible person would, <laughs> <laughs> but I tend, I tend to look very much at, uh, I mean, it's, anyway, I do, but the image, and I don't so much care about i don't think size hugely hugely matters but i, mm. I don't like big it's interesting though isn't it because because like you say from a catalog you when you're looking you might not know but well, actually the scale yeah. of this could be enormous no but you just have to um, read what, what the caption says and then you're okay <laughs> and the next one yeah um this one i was interested in the left hand man's Teeth, because I thought his teeth and mouth looked most most particular, and then mm -hmm. from the next, flick to the next. Yes. <laughs> well, there they are. They are. There his, they are. And he, I've drawn drawn my own legs and my own teeth, and I've done the gaps between my teeth, and I've done my hair, and I thought, well, you know, Jibufi here has in fact done. He may he's work. Owned. He may work from prisoners and psychotic people, but actually, yeah, he's working for himself. Yes, exactly. I'm going to just flick back and forth so we can look at the teeth again. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and that's the last one, Rose. I've had a good goat teeth in the, in the image above as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, anyway. Was... Well, um, that's that's so brilliant. Thank you so much. It's been fun. It's like I say, I, I feel privileged that we've been able to have so many talks about this already and to just hear your perspective on his work and yours it's fascinating well i can i mean i can love judo for me he, he, yes as a, particularly in the 70s and so on he was he was big, big. but then that was now I, rather than craggy surfaces i quite like shiny um and i quite like the um the intense representation of folk artists um, mm. um a lot of work that's been done at the moment is, is quite, yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of imagery which is more realistic, like Kerry James Marshall, you know, like, um, yes, yeah. One of my, you know, one of my favorites is Trouble Our Self does some nice sculpture too. Oh, and yes, yeah, beautiful. Nice sculpture, she has a nice feel. And one of my, I wanted to mention one of my arts are uh, less known. Marginal, well, sort of uh, up to this point, marginalized Mexican artists is, um, <coughs> well, what's her name? <coughs> Cervantes. I can't think of her name without having introduced her. I'm completely sorry. I wish it darling, because I forgot. Um, Cervantes is her surname. I did write it down. Let me have a look. I can get blocks, I can suddenly forget a name. Let's see if I can find her. It's very irritating. Uh, yeah. Well, you can always you can always let me know that one later. <laughs> Alida, Alida yeah. Cervantes, and I. Okay. She's. All right. I'll make a note. She's exciting, and she is. And her paintings are not academic. Yeah. 
Alida Cervantes. Alida, I don't know how to yeah, Cervantes. Yeah. Brilliant. I know her name like I know everyone's name, but because, you know, I can just, I can easily forget her name. Anyway, that is her, that's her name, Alida. Okay, I've got it. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I don't want to leave, but we have done the hour, Rose, so I'm afraid we're going to have to say goodbye, but goodbye. thank you. I, well, I can't thank you enough for giving us this wonderful insight into your practice. I've loved meeting you. I've uh, loved meeting you too. And I've also liked coming back to the Google thing. Oh, well, maybe we can have some future catch-ups where we talk about him a bit more. Brilliant. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rose. Goodbye. Bye.